Charlene's family today, his wife of 29 years, Jawa. Jawa, see all these people here today, they're here for you as much as they are for Brian and all the family. Children, Leslie, Louise, Nick and Andrew, and the five grandchildren, Zoe, Elliot, Sebastian, Alexander and Samantha. And we welcome those of you who are live streaming, uh, particularly those of you joining us from China. We hope you are safe and well, and that you can feel part of this celebration of Brian's life today. We're coming to you uh, from the beautiful Redlands Coast, about 35 kilometres uh, from Brisbane CBD. Uh, it's a, uh, an overcast day here today. Just when I, I met up with um, Brian's son, Nick, there, a couple of weeks ago, he shared a few stories with me about his dad. And, uh, without stealing your thunder, uh, Nick, he seemed to share with us um, four different, he, he's looked at his father's life from four different perspectives. Uh, we'll hear about him as, as a family man, his education, his working life and his interests. And it's, uh, it's always a challenge, isn't it, to um, particularly, you know, an elderly parent to try and encapsulate their lives uh, in a few short minutes. So we'll hear from Nick shortly, but it's, a, it's something that each of us can think about, you know, that we're given this gift called life. And imagine um, that just before we, we pass away, um, we're asked the question, what did you do with your life? What did you do? How, um, how did you treat people? Um, how did you, particularly your family? What did you do with the gifts and talents that you had? Did you use them um, to make this world a better place, a happier place? So it's, it's something that we all might reflect upon our own lives too, as we celebrate Brian's life today. So as we begin, let's just be still for a moment. Let's think of Brian and who he's been for you. Well, I'd like to invite son Nick to deliver the eulogy Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Nick, as mentioned, thank you for that. I'm one of Brian's children. Um, most, if not all, of us have met Brian, uh, my dad, and we all have a unique perspective of him. So with that in mind, I would like to present you with a challenge right now. If I ask you to think of just one word to describe Brian Merritt, I'm sure it would be difficult. I mean, it's just one word. And as difficult as that is to boil anyone's life down to one word, the word that you might come, at, come up with would not only most likely be different from everybody else's word. So have a think right now while you're listening. You'll think of the times that you work with Brian, you socialise with him, you, live, you learn from him, and you live with him. And the word that you arrive at will mean something to you. Whether it means happiness, joy, anger, love, surprise, or a myriad of other descriptions and emotions. This word will mean something to you, which represents your relationship with Brian Merritt. And even if by chance you come up with the same word as somebody else, I'm not going to ask you to share it. Um, precise meaning of that word representing your relationship with Brian will still be unique. So the word that I've come up with is industrious. Industrious is a good word. For me, Dad was industrious. He was always busy. When I sat down to nut out this eulogy, I started looking at things that he's done in his life. It's exhausting to think about what he did with his 88 years. Dad didn't come from a privileged background. He came from a lower working class family with his mum 
when, and his sister Betty, growing up in Williamstown and in parts of central Victoria. And while he left school early, he made sure that his work, during his working life, he got the education he wanted, the education that he missed out on as a boy. Education was very important to him. Throughout his career, he managed studying and completing several postgraduate degrees from Deakin and the University of Queensland, usually by remote correspondence, covering areas of study including Chinese, Japanese, and Papua New Guinean culture and history. In the late 1970s, I can recall uh, regularly having to count the number of words in Dad's never-ending typewritten university assignments. So without wanting to read out a list of Dad's curriculum vitae, <laughs> a, a list of his working life will go part one to demonstrating the word that I chose, industrious. I'll try to be brief. Let me give you an incomplete summary of his working life. He worked as a film editor for the ABC in Tasmania. He was a cameraman and then a reporter for Channel 9 in Melbourne. He was a radio station manager in the Western Highlands of the then Australian Territory of Papua New Guinea. He headed up Radio Australia's P&G Broadcasting Department in the 1970s. Dad worked for Consing Rio Tinto, now known as Rio, um, in various roles, including their chief representative in Papua New Guinea in the 80s, and later on in China and in, up into the mid-1990s. Plus, he had earlier stints in uh, both Melbourne and Perth. After China, he retired to, to Brisbane. And I put retired in quotations because he commenced on another career. This one lecturing in Asian business studies at this, as an associate fellow at Griffith University in, uh, until 2008. He certainly was industrious. But there was more to Dad than his work. He was almost obsessive about his music principally classical and pre-classical eras of music, although more modern work would occasionally creep in. Um, it comes to mind Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody and Abba's Mamma Mia. Admittedly, these occasions were very rare. And he had a vast collection of recordings of all types of classical music, operas, ballets, oratorios. And he even, he had an equally vast knowledge of music. I used to make that he had a collection in excess of 5,000 DVDs and CDs in a dedicated room in his and Chawa's house in Birkdale. A collection that several years ago was donated to Griffith University. They were donated because as his hearing diminished, he realised he could no longer, he didn't have enough time to listen to them. He gave them the way, he gave them a way to share with those he believed would benefit from them. Musically, he also played the cello. Uh, he loved the cello. Uh, although as a child in the 1970s, I certainly didn't appreciate him practicing his instrument of choice. <laughs> Conversely, I don't think Dad really liked listening to me learning the <laughs> So This is something I've tried to rectify for myself as a parent by ensuring that I listen to my children as they've been learning their instruments. Dad also sang. Uh, many of you would have heard him sing. He's a, he aspired to sing like the operatic heroes such as Placido Domingo and Yuli. Dad was a tenor and even briefly was a member of St. Mary's Choir in Jordan. And while Dad was what I would call religiously atheist, in the days of my youth he did step back into the church occasionally to sing Jerusalem as a communion reflection at the incredibly rare Christmas Mass. He had many, many interests in a broad range of subjects. Music you already know. But in, also in history, art, languages, the Third Reich period of Germany. In fact, on retiring from Griffith University, he had intended to write a book on Nazism. And he had an extensive library of books uh, that he'd amassed to back up the interests in those subjects. Photography and video recording were passions that he had through his life. And early on in PNG, he had once held his pilot's license. His interests were diverse. Dad wasn't a master sportsman, although he was enthusiastic for the sports that took his attention. He played squash until his boys started beating him. He loved kiting, especially in his early period in Papua New Guinea. And he enjoyed sailing his Hobie cat, like a catamaran, pastime he took from PNG down to Perth. However, I also recall his unfortunate habit of capsizing his boats. 
I remember this having been dumped by him in both rivers in both Geelong and Perth. He had a good sense of humour, um, especially with British post comedy, including the goons, Monty Python, Faulty Towers. And he would tell me rude jokes that he'd heard from work. Some I didn't understand then, and some I still don't. <laughs> um, but I have many good memories of my dad, many good ones, and some not so. Um, he wasn't a saint, which is a good thing for him, because being an atheist, you know, being a saint is not a good thing. Did he have any regrets? Well, I don't know that there were many regrets, but I do recall him saying to me once that he wished he'd given he'd give up alcohol sooner than he did when he did. He gave up alcohol when he was living in China to work about hepatitis. Dad crammed a lot into his life. But I'm told it's not polite to uh, keep on going. So let me sum up. He was married twice, first to Francis Robertson in 1959, with whom he had five children, including me. He has five grandchildren. He married Chen Shaoa in 1994. Their Melbourne wedding, I remember, because I was asked to say a few words on the spot and without giving any time to prepare for them. And I'm not known for public speaking. Um, but I'll put more thought into these words here than I did then. So let me get back to where I started, um, the one word to describe Brian Merritt. I said my word was industrious. Does any, did anybody think of a word? You don't need to tell me. Um, but given the opportunity, if you did think of a word, we could change it now. If you would allow me to change my word, perhaps a better word, Perhaps a better word than industrious would be erudite. Erudite means someone who is transformed from a roughened or uninformed state to a polished and knowledgeable one, knowledgeable one through a devotion to learning. Erudite.
Thanks very much, Nick, for that wonderful tribute to you, Dan. Thank you. Well, now I'd like to invite uh, Brian's wife, Matt Charlotte. Uh, she's put pen to paper. If you'd like to uh, come forward and share that with us now, please. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, the music attracted Brian and me. He was sent to work in Beijing. I was performing cello in Beijing Central, China Central <coughs> Orchestra. Since the open of China, many wonderful great musicians came to China to perform. At that time, uh, Sawa could not speak English. She had Brian to buy tickets for the music event. She and learned Russian before. Uh, before 19, uh, 1994, both of them, both of them uh, were single. Uh, At that time, Sawa started learning English. <coughs> After their marriage, Sawa found out Brian was a very diligent uh, person, like to study. She wrote her thesis in Beijing. She earned her, his master's degree. Her topic was the history between uh, in China, modern China. After they came back from China, Brian encouraged Sapa to earn her master's degree. That time she was 60 years old. Sapa's friend told her, Your husband was very good. She, he, he could en encourage you to study more in Australia. Uh, Sapa's friend told her it's not very common. A husband would encourage his wife to study more. <coughs> Their marriage has been 30 years old. Brian told her her luck came from their marriage. Uh, he, he wouldn't regret his life. Sapa also contributed herself to the marriage. She will never forget him. Thank you very much, Sapa. Thank you. Today we acknowledge our appreciation for the privilege of sharing a part of Brian's life. And even though his death has meant a physical break in the links of the chain that bind you to each other, 
the influence and effect of Brian's life is still evident even now as we speak his name. And so we say that we are glad that Brian lived. We are glad we felt his touch and heard his laughter. We are comforted to know that his pain has now ended, his spirit is free. That he leaves this life satisfied with the knowledge that he has accomplished his task. We will forever cherish the memory of Brian's love, his resilience, his wisdom, his friendship, but most of all, his love. Just before we conclude, uh, on behalf of Shawa and all the family, I'd like to thank you all very much uh, for being part of this celebration of Brian's life today. Thanks also to Mark, Sherry, and Lynn from Cape Smith Funerals, for so compassionately looking after us as well. And a special thanks once again uh, to grandson Sebastian and Alexander for uh, putting your gifts and talents um, to our enjoyment uh, today and enhancing this time uh, of paying our last respects to your grandfather. Thank you, boys. Nick uh, very eloquently initially used the word industrious to describe his father and um, put a case forward. I think it would stand up in a court of law, um, Nick, um, that that be the word. But beautiful way that um, you talked about that transformation <coughs> of that word. Erodite. And I, I think it's a challenge uh, for each of us too. And I, I'd like to conclude on this note in the light of what Nick has, has shared with us. He invited us to think of a word uh, that comes to mind to describe his father. So let's do a little bit of, of self reflection now. Think about your word for yourself. What would that be? What would that word be? What, right now, at this time in your life, what would be an appropriate word um, to describe yourself? It may not come to mind right now, but maybe in the quiet of this evening or over the weekend you might ponder that. But the second, my second question is, and again, in line with what Nick, the note that we concluded on, what would be the word that you would aspire to be described as? Because we're all on this journey, um, this journey that we call life, but none of us has got to the finish line then yet, because we were sitting there. Um, Brian has got to the finish line, that's why he is here. But we're still on this journey, so we're all a work in progress. So what is the word that we aspire to? That we probably couldn't honestly give ourselves right now. What, um, what, what word would we aspire to? So I'll leave you with those thoughts, those questions, as we uh, continue to celebrate Brian's life and the ways that he has touched and enriched your lives and no doubt the lives of countless other people. We'd like to stand now for the committal, please. <coughs> Tenderly and reverently, we commit Brian's body to the purifying elements, grateful for the life that has been lived all that Brian's life has meant to us. We now leave Brian in peace. With much love and respect, we bid him farewell. Thus, in thinking of Brian, let us leave this place in quietness of spirit and live with concern and affection for one another. Thank you. Thank you, boys. If you'd like to be seated, please.